Okay, let's take a look at probably one of the toughest calculus sort of problems that you might see on the AP test. Uh, I will not hold you responsible to this on our quiz or on our big exam. We will probably talk about this at a review session, but I usually don't do it in class. So if you want to take a look at this, it might help you a little on the AP test. But again, don't worry about this. If this gets confusing, I would just say forget about it. So let's say we have a car and they're cruising along the road at some initial velocity and they just take their foot off the gas and they coast to a stop. And so we know they're going to stop based on some friction in the parts of the car. But let's assume it's all a result of drag, which is a pretty good assumption for the first part of the motion. So if we draw a free body diagram, we have the normal force, we have the weight. But the key thing is force of drag opposing the motion opposite to the velocity. And so to make the velocity positive, I'll make the direction the car is going positive so we get a negative acceleration. And we're going to assume the force of drag is a linear model. This problem gets very difficult to solve if you have kV squared or something. And uh, you definitely wouldn't be asked to do that on the AP test. And so we start with Newton's second law, F equals ma. We're looking in the x direction. On the AP test, they may say something like, write a differential equation for this problem. Differential equation means Newton's second law, F equals ma. So it's free body diagram, it's F equals ma. And we have one force, the force of drag, and it is in the negative direction. It's uh, um, uh, picking positive x to the right, and the same with velocity to the right. And then this is how we make it a differential equation. We replace the acceleration with dv dt. And so now notice the force of drag I've replaced with kV. And so I have everything written in terms of the velocity. This is what makes it solvable. And so that's Newton's second law. This is writing it as a differential equation. Essentially, you replace A with dV dt. That will get you some points. So if you just stopped here, you'd be fine. Solving this again, not easy. It involves some calculus, but most of the tough part is algebra. And so if we look at this equation, we see the velocity equals its derivative. Now, sure, there's a constant here, negative k and m. But if we rearrange that a little bit, we can see that dv dt, the derivative of velocity, equals the velocity with a constant here. And so what we do is a, is a very sophisticated technique that you'll learn in differential equations is to guess the answer. Those of you in calculus may know about separating variables and integrating. Go ahead and do that. What I'm going to show you is a more general approach that works for a, a wider variety of problems and you might find easier. And so is there a function that if it take its derivative, it doesn't change much? And there is. And it is e. And so the derivative of e is e. And so if you do a graph of an E function and then do a graph of its slope, it has the same shape. And so that's kind of interesting about E. That's one of its main properties. And so this is what I'm going to guess, that velocity is a function of time, is E to some constant times T, because it's got to vary with time. There's some constant out in front, and maybe there's an added constant. And so this is the standard guess when you see a differential equation where the velocity or whatever it is uh, that you're working with equals its own derivative with some constants. And so all I need to do is find out what a, b, and c are. So it's a very confident guess. And so I'm going to take the derivative. And so the derivative of a e to the b t, all you do is multiply uh, the function by whatever's in front of t take the derivative of what e is to and multiply it. So the derivative of a e to the b t is b a e to the b t. And we know the derivative of a constant is 0. So this is the derivative, and that is the velocity. So all I have to do now is substitute this in to my equation for the velocity and substitute this in to my equation for its derivative and solve for these constants. And so this is really the only calculus part here is replacing a with dv dt and taking the derivative of my guess here.
And so if I do that, here's its derivative, and here is my guess, and then there was this constant negative k over m. And so if you look at this, I need to make this an equal. It might be better if we multiply this out, but can you see that c is 0? The only way this is going to work is if there's no c there. If we multiply it out, you might see it easier. So I have some constant e to the bt. Over here, I have some constants e to the bt. The only way these equal each other is if this is 0. And so I know that c is 0. So this is gone. And so now if we look at this, a e to the bt, a e to the bt, what does b have to be for this to be an inequality? Well, it's got to equal negative k over m. So again, I'm just doing algebra. You can do this more formally, um, solve this algebraically, but you can see you just get those would cancel, right? b is negative k over m. And so I know two of the constants now, so let's put those back into my guess and see what we have. Let's clean things up a little bit here. And so this is what my guess looks like now. And so I figured out what b was, it's negative k over m, and I figured out what c was, it's zero. Now I just have one job left, what is a? Well, I can figure out what a is because I know the initial condition. The velocity was v0 at time zero. So what happens if I put in zero here for time? Well, I get e to the zero, that's one, and so v equals a. And so v uh, equals a e to the zero, or a is v zero. So I've got my third constant. Again, just doing algebra using the initial condition when I was given here. And this is the answer. And so if I graph that, I can uh, see what happens to the velocity as a function of time as the car goes to a stop. It looks something like this. And if they ask me how fast is it going at some time before it stops, I can figure that out. And so again, this is a really tough thing to do. Um, if you want to see if you can do it, there are other problems like this. Uh, what about the one where we drop something and it falls? We talked about that in class. And so for an object dropped with air resistance, we came to this, right? We did F equals MA and we solved for um, the acceleration and that was G minus K over M times V. Go and look at your notes and you'll see that's what we came up with. So now I write it as a differential equation, replace a with dv dt, and then this is going to be my guess. This, this is the derivative of my guess. And so you would put this into here. You would put this into here and see if you can get what a, b, and c are. And so I'm going to show you what the answer is, and you could give that a try. It comes out to this. And so this one's a little tougher, but the techniques are the same. Notice the similarities. Notice that at large t, t equals uh, t equal infinity here, this goes to zero. And so you just get v terminal is mg over k. And so this does give me the terminal velocity that we derived in class. So take a look at that, ask questions if you want. We'll probably look at something like this at the study session. Uh, but again, if this scares you, don't worry. It scares me too. You don't need to do this to do well to get a 5 on the AP test. But if you do, take some time with this. Might squeak out a few more points.